In this video, we're going to be talking about how MADS can function as a traditional ADSR envelope generator. There are a couple different types of envelopes that you can create, and normally you would consider MADS would do one of these first two. So there's an attack release envelope, there's an attack sustain release envelope, and then the ADSR is what our goal is. So briefly, let's look at the different stages of an ADSR and how we can achieve that using MADS. So remember in an ADSR envelope that we're adjusting three different quantities. We're adjusting three time constants and one amplitude constant. So for the attack and decay portions of the envelope, we're adjusting the time of that attack and the time of that decay. For sustain, we're adjusting the amplitude or how loud the sustain note will be. And then for release, we're adjusting the release time. So a longer release time will be useful for pads, shorter release time will be useful for short plucky sounds. Now we need to recreate this using MADS. We're going to use channels 1 and 4 together and we're also going to use the OR output uh, from the bus. So using the OR output we're actually going to create two envelopes uh, and then take the highest value or the maximum output of the combination of those and that's going to give us our ADSR. So let's consider what MADS is good at. It's good at doing an A attack decay or attack release envelope as we saw before. It's also good at doing an attack sustain release. So in a straightforward manner we can combine channels 1 and 4 and recreate this envelope. So let's imagine that we're going to take uh, the channel 1 using the trigger input. Now with the trigger input remember there's no sustain. Uh, it is only going to do the attack and the release or the rise and fall portions. Okay so that's pretty straightforward. Now so imagine that the gate signal comes in here. And we have channel 1 creating the envelope in red. Now at the same time we also have channel 4 triggered. But that's going to have different settings. It's going to have at least the same attack to time, or if not greater, than the uh, channel 1. But we're not going to use the trigger input, we're going to use the signal input. And we, we, when we input our gate into that signal input, we'll get that sustain phase. So this in blue is fairly easy to recreate. This in red is easy to create. And all we want to do is take the OR output so that the green envelope is all that's left. And I'm going to label those. So let's review what controls we're going to need to know here. We're going to need to use the rise portion of channel 1 and the fall portion of channel 1. And since we're sending it through the bus, our attenuverter is going to be fully positive. For channel 4, we're going to use the rise control, the fall control, but most importantly, the sustain level will be determined by the channel 4 attenuverter. If we have the attenuverter all the way up, uh, our ADSR will basically look like a typical attack sustain release. If we turn that attenuverter down, this sustain level will adjust up and down accordingly. So let's take a look at what that looks like on the modular. Okay, so here we have uh, our basic setup. I have the keyboard controller down here, uh, just off screen, uh, which is going to give us uh, one volt per octave input into the DPO, and it's also going to give us two, two triggers or two gate signals that I'm going to be sending up to MADS. Uh, we're going to be monitoring the final output of the DPO, and that's going into our VCA, which is the mod mix. So I'm just playing the keyboard down here. So this patch is actually fairly straightforward. I've seen it done a couple other ways, but this seems to be the easiest to me. Uh, the first step is we're going to send one of our gate signals to the trigger input of channel 1. So the trigger input means there's going to be no sustain function, basically. So the first thing we're going to do is take the OR output uh, from the signal bus. So that's going to be right here. And that's what we're going to use to uh, control our VCA. So I'm going to turn that up. So now. As I play the keyboard down here, we have what is going to be our attack and decay controls. So if we want our A to be adjusted, first, uh, keep in mind that you need to adjust both of these at the same time. But this will be our attack right here, and this will be our decay. Now, this keyboard controller, you can either mult this signal or uh, it puts out two uh, of the same gate signal. And on channel 4, we're not going to send the... Uh, signal into the trigger input, we're going to send it to the signal input. So now, in fact, let's unplug 
channel one. We're just going to send it to channel four. So you can hear, as I play the keyboard down here, I've got that sustain phase. And remember, the sustain can be controlled by the attenuverter here. So in order for this to be ADSRs, we're going to have to have it lower than the level being sent in by the channel 1 attenuverter. So channels 2 and 3, I have just barely negative so that there's no positive control voltage, otherwise they'll open up the VCA. But uh, with just these two, we can create a traditional ADSR envelope. And it can get a little extreme, so it helps to have the attenuverter fairly high so you don't have a huge drop in volume. Uh, and now the attack should follow the attack of channel one. The release is basic, or the fall channel is basically your release. So that could be pretty long. But you have that initial onset, you have that pluck of the decay, and then you have your sustain and your release. And let's look at what that looks like uh, in the DAW just so you can see what we've created. So here's the audio we just recorded, uh, and you can see the uh, attack phase, uh, the decay phase, the sustain, and then the release. The attack can be made much longer, uh, so can the decay, the sustain can be dropped down, and the release can do whatever, but remember, so for the attack, that's going to be the rise settings on channel one. The decay will be the fall settings on channel one. And then the sustain will be the attenuverter for channel four. And the decay or the release uh, will be channel four's fall settings. So that's how you can make MADS into an ADSR envelope pretty easily. Uh, just mold your gate signal, send it to channel one and four, and then use the OR output, uh, keeping in mind the attack settings for both of them. And now you have a traditional ADSR rather than just attack and release. Input, you're going to be having an attack, really?